everyone, it's Wednesday, which means it's time for another episode of A Cup of Positivity. This week, I had the lovely Tanisha Graham as my guest. Tanisha is an emotion code practitioner, which is a title I'm only now learning about and I personally find quite fascinating. She explains how our emotional self can affect our physical self and in many cases can become the reason or the cause of a lot of physical ailments. Tanisha explains what exactly it means to be an emotion code practitioner, what the heart wall is, and how trapped emotions can be released in order to help us move forward and to tap into our subconscious mind. I also explained my personal experience with Tanisha when I had a consultation with her, basically to identify whether my body had any traumas or blocks that needed releasing. I was initially recommended to speak to Tanisha because I was suffering with an ongoing physical issue. So I thought, well, there's no harm in trying to see whether that physical issue was related to any kind of emotional trauma or problem that I had. As always, I hope you enjoy the episode and please don't forget to like, comment or share if so. Thanks so much for tuning in and see you soon. Hi, Tanisha. Welcome to A Cup of Positivity. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Thank you for having me. No, thank you for coming. I've been meaning to ask you for a while, actually, since our phone conversation. It's just been really hectic. It, it's been like the days have just been going by very fast and this this COVID craziness hasn't yeah, happened. No. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Did you bring your cup of tea with you? I have my cup of tea ready to go and it's much needed this morning. It's morning here. <laughs> Yeah, it's morning for you, right? Um, what cup of tea have you got? Well, I have, um, this is like a, a calming chamomile tea. Mm. And most people don't drink calming chamomile tea in the morning, but that's what I have. Yeah. <laughs> and then I have this uh, beautiful, this mug that I have is um, one that I share with my, a few of my exchange daughters. I've had girls from overseas. And, and so it says, um, connected heart to heart but never apart maybe in distance but never in heart so it's just oh, cute that's I, lovely. I love that the handle is like a little heart as well isn't it cute I know I love it it's, it's so cute and the cute. girls all have one they're back in their home countries but they they all have one too so yeah when we're apart we're still connected at the heart so I oh, that's like lovely that. yeah well, I've got an energizing tea, which is supposed to be for the morning. So we kind of have gone, <laughs> <laughs> we've gone reverse, me and you. We've gone reverse. And I've got it in my, a friend gave me this. It's uh, Mr. Perfect. And she said, until I find my Mr. Perfect, I already have one at home. <laughs> <laughs> so perfect. I love it. Yeah. Love it. So that's, that's that one. Friends are for. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> So yeah, if you could introduce yourself and then we can go from there. Okay, fantastic. Well, uh, my name is Tanisha Graham and I, for many years I had dance studios and I was a choreographer and, and did that for 18 years. And I loved that, but then uh, God gave me three boys. Wow. <laughs> so they didn't want to dance and you know do things like that. So I just made a shift. I taught school for three years. It still felt there was something missing, you know, like there's something else that I'm supposed to be doing. And just trying to pinpoint that has been the journey really my last year. And so I, I wrote a book and needed help just getting it out and understanding the whole publishing process. So I hired a coach and then that turned into an amazing roller coaster ride this year. And I quit my job as a teacher this year to work for an institute that we built, that I built with my coach called the Inside Out Institute. And so now what I do is I, I'm an emotion code practitioner mm -hmm. and I'm chief visionary officer for that company as well. And what we do is we, we work together. So people that are trying to get out of that stuck mode, they yeah. may feel like they're not living their best life. Mm -hmm. We give them both a leadership coach and an emotion code practitioner like myself, and we help the client, you know, become the best version of themselves. So that's up to date. <laughs> yeah. So your book is released this was released this year or will be released? It, it's coming out around Christmas time. Okay. Uh, so it's it's called Make Room for Joy. Mm -hmm. And it's about just going through a hard time. When I, when I closed my dance studio, my entire 
identity was wrapped around that career. Mm. And so it was really hard once I, once I dropped that, that studio, I, I felt like all I was, was a dance teacher and a choreographer because I was yeah. proud of that. And once that was gone, it was just pretty hard. And so just finding joy again after that. And what I found was a lot of my joy came from bringing people in and helping people and serving people. Mm -hmm. And even though I didn't feel like I had much to give in a monetary way, I had a lot to give from my heart. Yeah. And so, yeah, it turned into a really beautiful experience bringing in girls uh, for exchange programs to study here in the States. And I have brought three and they brought me joy mm -hmm. and it didn't make sense to my family because we were sort of in a financial hardship after the studio and just trying to rebuild. And so bringing an extra mouth to feed <laughs> didn't yeah. make sense to anyone, but to me. Hmm. And, and I'm glad I did it because now I love those girls and I don't see them or talk to them as much as I'd like, but you know, thank goodness for WhatsApp <laughs> and yeah. the internet. We chat, but, but uh, Carla, I haven't seen her in three years. Wow. I see Jana the most from Brazil and then uh, Roscoe in, in Denmark. So yeah, that's kind of my, my book in a nutshell. It's about that process. Okay. And then when you said you're an emotion code practitioner, but for someone, I mean, I actually never heard of that before I spoke to you. So what exactly yeah. does that mean? That's a great question. Well, Dr. Bradley Nelson discovered that a lot of, of things that are happening within the body, both physical and mental, can be caused, maybe not caused by, but the trapped emotions can attribute to that. And so what emotion code is, is it's basically a list of emotions and there's around 60 emotions on this chart. And so what practitioners do is we use muscle testing and magnets to help release those trapped emotions. So the, the easiest way to explain that is our subconscious mind ha has every bit of information we've ever you know, seen, heard, done, mm -hmm. um, felt and that's about 90 percent so think of like an iceberg and the tip of the iceberg is our conscious mind and that's okay. what we're okay. living in right now speaking and then everything under the ocean everything under is just all our life and what happens is our subconscious tends to put a wall up you know you've heard that term when we go through things and it keeps us from moving forward and so your subconscious stores that and we can muscle test either in person or I can muscle test via proxy for you. Mm -hmm. And we ask your subconscious mind questions about what it wants to release. And so it's that type of, uh, of uh, treatment. And it's so fascinating because my, the muscles will get strong when it's positive or when it's truth. So if I were to say, does Martha have a trapped emotion and I'm muscle testing, and there's different ways to do that. I can show you and I get a solid answer. That means the muscles are strong. That means there's truth. And, and that's, that's a yes. If the muscles are weak, then it's not true. And it's, it's, it's not, you know, it's not, it's not true. So, so it's fascinating. It's like, it's something God has given us, but just we may not have known that. Now, what's interesting is my father has muscle tested for years. Mm -hmm. He's always done it. And with supplements, like we would test supplements or say, is this tea best for me? And then lean back or lean forward for a positive or negative response. Or is this vitamin best for me? And, um, and, and just go through those processes. So it wasn't new to me. And when I learned about how the emotion code could fit into muscle testing, and help release these trapped emotions and emotional baggage. It, it was just remarkable what it can do, um, even with chronic pain. Um, and sometimes those emotions, if you think of them, they're like, like an energetic ball of energy, right? So think of yeah. like a piece of fruit, like an orange or an apple that size, and it's just energetic, um, just a mass of energy. And it's pressing on the tissues or pressing you know, on blood vessels, who knows, and not causing proper flow of energy and, and uh, blood flow. Mm. 
in the body. Mm -hmm. So when we can release those energy, those energies of emotions, then the body gets into a healthier flow. But I mean, for me, I, because I originally was recommended to call you um, Mm -hmm. through a friend of mine. Mm -hmm. And I was, I called you because I was suffering with something that was physical. And I found it very strange to believe Basically, she had told me that she called you because she was suffering with allergies. Again, something that I believe to be physical. And I really struggled at first with that connection of how can I have something emotional trapped in me that's affecting me on a physical level? Like, how are the two so heavily intertwined? Mm -hmm. It's, It's true. Well, it's hard to explain. But I think the best way to think of it is we're spiritual beings. Mm -hmm. Uh, We feel, we make a lot of our decisions based on feelings. Uh, Sometimes we make bad decisions based Mm -hmm. on emotions. Um, But I think sometimes what happens is your subconscious, its job is to protect you. Mm -hmm. So if you've been through a lot of things in the emotion code, Dr. Bradley talks about a heart walk. And what that basically is, is somehow mentally in our mind, if we've been hurt or we've been let down or we've been betrayed, all of these different emotions are going to put like little layers of, of a wall around our heart. Mm-hmm. And your heart is like your second brain. And there's been amazing studies about the heart, and I'll share some of that in a minute, but there's just layers and layers in front of your heart to protect it. So one way you can tell if you might have a heart wall, you can muscle test to see, but you may have someone being very, very sweet to you, very nice to you. And you're thinking, I know they love me and I know they're being sweet to me, but I don't feel it. Have you ever felt that? Mm -hmm. Like you don't feel it deep. It's like you're looking at them through glass. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. And and vice versa. You have trouble giving the love completely because there's little emotions that are blocking you from feeling completely because it's scary. This feels like last time. I'm going to protect myself. And so emotionally, mentally, we put these little walls up. So by walking your subconscious through those releases, we break down those layers to where the heart can open up and the love that you have in your individuality and your beauty and your, your love for others can shine out like a beam of light. Mm -hmm. But when that light is, is blocked, you can't see it and you can't feel it. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of amazing stories that I've heard Dr. Bradley talk about uh, are one of them is, you know, different individuals, you know, may have a heart transplant. Yeah, because they've been through you know trauma with their with their organ of their heart. Well, I I heard a story that when a, a man was was getting a new heart and he was what was it? He was nervous because the recipient of his uh, of his heart was way uh, a lot younger than him in a different culture, and he was nervous that he would not have the same likes anymore. Well, when he got this new heart, he got a heart, he got the heart from an African American music composer. And when he got that heart, he was an older man, you know, American man. He started having this love for classical music. And he was just obsessed with classical music because he had that other man's heart. Mm. So the heart has memories. It's it's like a it's like a second brain. And it's fascinating for me. And there was another heart transplant of a man who he got a new heart and he would start going to this coffee shop around the corner and order a hazelnut latte. Well, he was able to meet his, the recipient was able to meet the family of the, the donor. And they said that she got a hazelnut latte every morning. Wow. And so it's just fascinating there's so much that we don't understand about how miraculous our bodies are and what they can do and how they try to protect us and what they know. And so 
the beautiful thing about this modality is we can just dive into the subconscious mind Mm -hmm. and try to release things. And there's a lot of, you know, medical type of therapy that does this. EMDR is a thing that psychiatrists use. Um, Things that just help dive into that subconscious and bring up old things and let them go. But sometimes those are all effective, you know, but sometimes they can just be traumatic to go back through that, you know, and this is a lot less abrasive, you know, you've been, you've had a treatment. Mm -hmm. So it's just very simple and it, it doesn't, you sometimes feel tired and processing after, but you're not going to feel like you've been on an emotional roller coaster ride. Most sessions, you know, some sessions it pulls things out like that, but but for the most part, it's an easy release and you feel lighter. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but then I always think it's strange that we, we're not really taught about these things and I think it's, it's not strange. really offered like as part of, I mean, I don't know how it is in America, but I have never heard anything like this recommended by a, a doctor or has any kind of therapy. It's fascinating and it makes you wonder if, you know, a lot of ancient type things were lost. You know, I believe Native Americans had beautiful ways of healing. Uh, And also ancient Chinese medicine has got some really fantastic things. But our culture just shifted to be more on the medical and more on the technology type of side. And, you know, I, I totally agree with you. There's, why aren't we being taught these things? And I think there's going to be a movement where we start shifting towards this type of thinking. And there already is in ways with meditation, you know, nobody used to meditate. And now, you know, doctor, there are all these amazing people are doing these studies on how meditation can help you. Mm-hmm. And that's all subconscious type of of things and so i think we're we're beginning to get a shift in that but it's quite sad that we weren't taught any of this and one of my missions that i would like to do is go into high schools and teach kids about this just like we didn't really learn about finances in high school you know we're like thrown out into the world and why don't they teach us how to have our own business and you know, how to do our own taxes and that kind of thing. It's part of being an adult. We should understand that. Well, to me, this is part of having a healthy psyche and learning how to watch your reactions and be a good symptom seeker. And then you can release these things on your own so they don't get trapped in your body and cause havoc. Yeah. And I, I feel like it might be helpful for anyone watching or listening to kind of um, share the experience I had with you. So mine was just a consultation, which was over the phone. Um, And like I said, I was recommended you you from a friend. Um, I was suffering with chronic cystitis since, I mean, I've suffered with it since I was like 19, Mm -hmm. on and off. Um, But recently, I would say probably since November last year, it was just every month I would get symptoms and it was just really affecting everything in my life. So I called you and then maybe just to go through like how the conversation went is you were very calming and you (laughs) said um, to just relax myself. And I kind of just thought of, I'm just going to act like I'm meditating whilst I speak to you. Mm -hmm. And then I don't remember the words you used, but you said that you were going to tap into my body. What was it you said earlier about? Well, my, my process, what I do is I, I spend about 10 seconds Mm -hmm. asking God to help me uh, because I believe we can't think that we're healers in our own human nature. I believe it all comes from our creator or God, you know, whatever people want to however people believe. And this isn't any type of religion. This is any religion. This just is energy. This is spirituality and energy. But I I spend 10 seconds and I just can ask God for help. And then I 
connect with you, just like we're connecting here. There's no cord between us. There's no wire connecting from you miles and oceans away from me, mm. but we're speaking through some type of energy, mm -hmm. right? So I'm connecting with you with love and intention to help release things from you that you can't see in your conscious mind. And so how it works is I let my subconscious take a back seat and I connect to your subconscious. And the most important part of emotion code and body code is the more advanced version. But the most important part is to ask good questions. So any question that you can ask, you can muscle test your body. And so one thing that you can do is a sway test. But what I do when I'm working on people across, you know, the country and in, in other countries and such, and I have many, I have many clients that are overseas for me. And so I use a muscle testing strategy. There's lots of different ones, but you can, your muscles will get strong. Like see how my fingers are linked here? When it's a yes or a positive, your muscles will get strong. So I can say, my name is Tanisha and my subconscious says, yes, it is. That's truth. That's right. If I say, my name is Martha, my muscles can't agree with that. My muscles just go limp. So I could pray and connect with you. And then the way I know I'm connected with you is I say, my name is Martha. And when I get strong with Martha, then I can start asking questions. Okay. That's, that's sort of how it works. And, or that is how it works. And, and then one thing that that's fascinating about it is, you know, we've forgotten that we can come together and we can help each other. You know, in ancient times, they would lay hands on people and pray mm -hmm. for people. They would do all these things. And we've forgotten all of that. Like you said, we're not taught those things. It's like, there's so many things that have been forgotten that are real truths. And I believe this is just a miraculous finding that can really help people help each other. And you can help yourself. You can do this to yourself as well. It's, it's better if you work with a practitioner, even myself, even though I am an, a certified emotion code practitioner, I still have other practitioners that work on me mm -hmm. because blocks when I, you know, if I'm trying to release things with myself, I've lived with those blocks for many years. I'm 40 years old. So years. So it's going to be hard for me to pull that out on my own. And then it just, it, it's crazy how it works. But if you've ever seen old, like ancient acupuncture charts or acupuncture maps, it, it basically looks like a lot of little energy rivers flowing into the body, mm -hmm. into the governing meridian. And the governing meridian is right here in the center, or it's in the center of your arm, like down your middle finger. Mm -hmm. And so once I find that emotion, say you have an emotion of sadness trapped from age 12 or something, and then I'm going to get a magnet and I'm going to use that magnet on my governing meridian acting as you to pull that sadness energy out of you. It's deep. It's quantum physics crazy, but it's, it's, it works. So then when you're asking me questions or you're asking my body to give you answers, right? Yes. Right. So when you ask a question, what do you feel? You feel the tightness uh, that's in a good your question. muscles? Yeah. I, I, I have learned, I've known that I've always been intuitive mm. and the more I work in this, as an energy practitioner, the more I step into my gifting and sometimes something will pop into my head. Some practitioners see visions. Uh, the more you practice these things, these gifts, the more they're going to come out. We're all born gifted, you know, in some kind of intuitive way, but the more you practice them, they come out. So sometimes I will get an idea it usually comes to a form of me in like a form of a knowing or an idea that's my gifting. And I'll just think like, I just, I'm, I'm thinking about a little girl walking through a sidewalk. Does that mean anything to you? Mm. And they're like, yeah, actually that happened to me. And this is the, da, da, da. sometimes those strange, you know, knowings will happen. 
And I feel like it's just God helping me connect with you. And I'm, I'm in your, I'm not in your brain, but I'm connected with you with your permission. That's a big one. You have to give me permission. Mm -hmm. And, and then sometimes I am literally just using the software there. The software for emotion code is just, it's just charts and I'm muscle testing charts. So is the trapped emotion she has in column A, column B, one, two, three, four, and then there's five. And then I break it down. Some practitioners are so solid that they don't need the charts anymore. Mm -hmm. And they can just feel what it is. And, and I believe that that's, that's true. I always use the charts because I don't want to get into my own head or my own pride and think that I am the healer. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. I know I'm just a vessel in the healing and I want to keep it pure and, and honest for you. And then when you get into the body code, oh my goodness, Martha, that's just a whole different, incredible modality. And there's over 250 hyperlinks in the body code app. And your listeners can actually get the body code app. If they know how to muscle test, they can muscle test their body to see what kind of imbalances they have. And the app is called, um, it's discover healing mm -hmm. app. And it's quite an expensive for an app, but it's worth every penny. If you know how to muscle test, and it's like $30 a month or something U S but we have a, a more extensive, if you're a body code practitioner, which I'm working on that. Yeah. You can use these charts. So it can even go to an, an alignment in your spine. It can go to an, um, a essential oil that your body needs that mm -hmm. will help you aid you, uh, down to an energy. This is really fascinating to me. Are there can there, there can be mental energies. And so for example, there's one called a broadcast message. Well, if you have a broadcast message, it's like you have a saying on your shirt and people are reading that as your energy. So I could have a shirt on that says, leave me alone. Mm -hmm. So people don't really approach me because I'm putting off an energy that says, leave me alone. So when I can clear that negative energy from you, you're going to be more approachable to people and you're going to, you know, so beautiful, such a beautiful modality. I'm so thankful for it. And it's amazing. It's hard to wrap your brain around. And that's why I always give a complimentary session the first time, because you just have to experience it. Don't you agree? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. To try to understand it. it yeah. It's just, yeah. But even, um, I don't know the exact date of our call, but I would say maybe it was like between two and three months ago. Yeah. And I haven't had any symptoms since then. You have not. No. Wow. And so I also really struggled with that because my logical side was like, well, you haven't given it long enough. Like it's not something <laughs> that I can test. Like maybe it's just a coincidence. <laughs> Isn't it wild? Uh, yeah, it's just all of these things. I'm constantly battling with my um, spiritual side and my logical side. Um, because I think I love to hear these kind of stories, but my logical side's always like, no, oh, yeah. it can't be like, how can one phone call release something that I've been struggling with for so long? And that's actually one of my other questions. Like when you, act, when you release certain things from people, when you speak to them, how does that happen? Like, how can you even release something that they've had in their body for maybe years and years? It's a good question. Well, quantum physics is, is quite hard to explain, but I can try. <laughs> so uh, think of it like, this is the way I picture it. You know how someone has rubbed your back and there's like a knot in your back and they're rolling past that knot? Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. Oh, yeah, get that stress knot out of there. Get that <laughs> stress knot out. Well, what is that? It's, I think it's a ball of energy. Mm -hmm. I think it's an emotion. I think they're like little balls of just, you could fill them when you rub in your back, you could fill them. Mm -hmm. And so everything is made of energy. The computers we're using are made of energy. The lamp next to me is made of energy. Everything is made of energy. And so are we, and so are emotions. And so energy can be released 
energy isn't really visible, right? It's, mm -hmm. it's not visible to the eye. Mm -hmm. Some people have gifts and see different things energetically. Some people see auras, things like that. And we've been trained, you know, I come from a Christian background. And so we were taught, oh, that's new age. That's weird stuff. Don't get into all of that. You know, hoo, 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 you know, yeah. <laughs> but what I'm realizing now is just because we can't see it doesn't mean it's not real. Mm. Um, isn't that what faith is anyway? Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's like we bring that, those little inner, think of it being like a little tiny ball that you felt in your shoulder blade when someone was rubbing it. You're like, oh yes, get that out. It hurts, but get it out. And then it goes through those little acupuncture maps I was telling you about those little, it's like little tiny rivers of energy under your skin that just look like a little tree roots. And, and I'm going to, it's so it's deep down, say, say this trapped emotion was stored in, in your uterus. Okay. And so I called, we called it out like, no, we're not going to keep that sadness in there anymore. So it comes to the surface and it's almost like hanging out outside of your body now. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to take the magnet and all the magnet does is intensify the intention because our, our red blood cells are, are this, it's like magnets. I mean, you can, you can detox yourself through a magnetizing like foot bath mm -hmm. because you're red blood cells pulse like this and release mm. toxins. Okay. Well, I believe you can release energy the same way. So I'm going to use this magnet and there are just kitchen magnets that are on the refrigerator. Mm -hmm. Use those. They don't have to be fancy. Or okay. you know, I have a fancy magnet that looks like a wand kind of that it has a roller thing in it. That's just a little bit stronger. But honestly, Dr. Bradley Nelson, the the doctor that that had discovered this said that it doesn't matter how how strong your magnet is it's just so so i say there was sadness stuck there now it's out and then i'm just going to take three swipes into your governing meridian to bring it into those rivers and pull it out and then it's released mm. so it's just energy it's energy it's um every, everything is energy and the thought that emotions can be energy is quite deep mm -hmm. and you can get into a lot more depth. I believe that you're shown things in the order that you're ready to receive them. Mm -hmm. And so if I were to give you a book on quantum physics and epigenetics, that's a whole different subject. It's pretty intense. A year ago, you would have thought I was mad, <laughs> but <laughs> Now that you've experienced it, you're like, there's something to this, mm. you know, now I'm ready for that book or now I'm ready to listen to that podcast or whatever. So I would just say if someone is listening to your show and they are learning about this, to just take it one step at a time. The Emotion Code book by Dr. Bradley Nelson is a very easy read. It has hundreds of testimonials in it, like, mm -hmm. your, like yours, totally different from depression to ADD. And we're not claiming that we healed those people. We're just telling you their testimonial. Mm -hmm. But there is a lot to it and it's real. And I believe it's a lost modality that we, maybe our ancestors knew about, but it somehow got, it got, it fell off through the generations. And, and so What's interesting about this, and this is something that sort of explains that, that you can carry on these energetic things in your DNA. There were studies done on the like ancestors, uh, or let's say it the other way, the descendants of people that survived the Holocaust. Mm -hmm. There was a young woman, and I think they did a study on quite a few of them that were really depressed very just depressed and had a lot of anxiety and even suicidal thoughts and such. And they tracked it down to being a, an inherited, an inherited emotion from one of those grandmothers that was in the Holocaust. Wow. So at conception, we have emotions that come with us from our family. Mm-hmm. Have you ever said like, oh, she's stubborn like her daddy? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, that's an energy. <laughs> you can release that. Mm. It's not just, you know, we know that 
you know, it's the same reason why some people are scared to adopt, which I think is very sad. Mm. We don't know if they're mom and dad. It's like we know that we can have the same sort of feelings and characteristics as our as our parents, but we don't understand why. So we just take it and leave it and, and don't dig deep. And I believe it's all because of energy. And I believe you can inherit emotions that are energy. And when you release those, you break that that chain of despair or sorrow or depression that your family's dealt with for years, even down to things that might be hereditary physically, it could even release those things. It's mm. really fascinating. So then are you saying that every physical issue that we face has some kind of deep rooted emotional connection? I'm going to tell you that I believe that, mm -hmm. but as we know, it's, it's hard to make claims yeah. with our medical community so strong. Um, so we, we believe that it, that has, it has helped. We have lots of testimonials that it has helped. We're not saying that it can cure anything mm -hmm. but personally. I can tell you my opinion and I believe that most physical things, even a physical shock to the body, like a car wreck or something, I believe can all be helped with energetic practices. Mm -hmm. Because think of, you know, we know pain comes from inflammation. Well, what's inflammation? We don't know. Swelling? Mm -hmm. What's swelling? You know, it's like, we know that that's what pain is caused by. So I believe there's a lot to the psyche and our brains and our subconscious is a miraculous tool, but also can wreak us havoc a bit trying to protect us mm. and block us. And, you know, and so I do believe that any, any client that I've had or, or let me say it this way, lots of clients that I've had that had pain or a physical ailment saw improvement, if not going away after a treatment. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I don't know that I healed them or it's not a cure what I'm doing, but I did aid them in releasing emotions that were contributing to those things. Yeah. And when you say you've helped your clients as well, is after they have that consultation that I had, what is the therapy after that? Like, how do you work with them? Great question. Most clients I can work on once a week. Uh, some clients need longer to process. So after we do a big session and release a lot of emotions that have been in you for 30 years, right? Mm -hmm. Your body has to find a new energy path. It's almost like you're in a river. Okay, think of a small river and you just tossed out 15 rocks. Mm -hmm. well, now the water is going to flow differently. It doesn't go around the same rocks. And, and, and you're, that's why you want to drink a lot of water. Your water is that like river and you've got to flow into places in your body that maybe there's been blockages before. So it takes sometimes the body anywhere from three to sometimes even 10 days to process a treatment. Mm -hmm. Most of my, my clients can do once a week treatments. Uh, the biggest thing that I like to work on with clients is of their heart wall. And sometimes heart walls take about three treatments. Uh, it's, it's so fascinating because mentally we will even create what our heart wall is made of. And often it is a surface that we think is hard enough or strong enough to keep pain away. Mm -hmm. And everybody's is different. So I'll just share with you, one lady's was made of clear plastic. Like okay. I can feel the idea come into my mind or I just start testing, is it harder than wood? Is it harder than metal? Is it, and I try to find what it's made of because it's a big deal for that person to help release that when they know, oh yeah, I know why it's made of that because I was around that my whole life or whatever. 
So this particular lady's was made of clear plastic and she said, that makes sense. I love clear plastic. Every, all of my grandparents and my parents always cover all the furniture in plastic. <laughs> it doesn't, so it protects it. So see how the mind works. And I'm like, clear plastic, that's crazy. Mm. But to her, that protected everything. Yeah. Right? And so then there was a heartbreak and then there was a betrayal and then all these things. And it can be six inches from the heart or it can be 15 miles Mm. if you've been through a lot. So it's just breaking down those little layers to open up the heart. And it's so beautiful when the heart wall's cleared. Martha, some beautiful things start happening. Lots of coincidences. Uh, People have found love. Mm -hmm. Many people have found love after heart walls are cleared because you're just radiating. They can feel you. They're drawn to you. You're drawn to them. Where with a heart wall, it's like, say you're walking your dog. It's like walking your dog with blinders. You could be walking by the love of your life every day. But if you're just like you know, zoned out, but you may turn and, and look and be more open to things around you when your heart wall's cleared. Yeah. So it's fascinating how it works, but most clients, I believe, should have six sessions to 12 sessions. And if they continue, great. Most of mine do because life happens, right? Mm-hmm. And they'll say, oh gosh, this happened with my son today and it brought up this for my childhood. They start getting better at realizing, oh, I know what's happening here. Mm. I reacted and snapped at my husband. And so I know I've got something that I need to release. Yeah. Let's release it. We release it and then they become less reactive. That is such a beautiful part of this treatment is they, they become less reactive mm. because anytime you're reacting, that's your subconscious being like, wait, Nope, not going to do that. Not going to go back there. And so if you are reactive, it's, it's a good chance that there could be a heart wall that we could release. Um, some clients want to work on abundance. Um, and different practitioners specialize in different things. Some, some practitioners work solely on the inner child. Mm-hmm. And the the discover healing who I'm a practitioner through, they teach you how to heal the inner child phases of your childhood that caused you to have blockages to move on as an adult. And you can have inner, those kinds of sessions. You can have affirmation sessions. So I have clients that say, I, I don't feel safe being successful. I think it's blocking me. I, I don't feel safe losing weight. I don't feel safe doing these. And so we can test with the body code if you are a hundred percent alignment with that. So, so say, I'm going to say a statement that I had to have a session on. I just stepped into my dream job and it almost didn't feel real. Mm-hmm. Have you experienced that? I'm like, is this real? Can I really quit my job? Like, I know I can quit my job, but can I really quit my job? People mm-hmm. are getting fired in COVID and I am quitting my job. And so it just, I was having this inner battle of trying to really understand that that was my reality. And so uh, a practitioner, a friend of mine did a session on me and I was only 70% in line with this statement. I am safe and qualified for my dream job. Mm -hmm. And I was only 70% aligned with that. So there were trapped emotions in me that I had gone through and losing the studio and doing, you know, these other things and transitions that were keeping me from being a hundred percent in line with that. So once I got a hundred percent in line with that statement, what happened? I quit my job. And so there's so many things. It's not like, um, there's a limit to what you can work on with energy healing, because like I said, everything's energy, every thought is energy. Mm -hmm. And the more you release, the more you raise your vibration and you just feel better. You feel more clear. It's just, it's a beautiful thing to help with really any circumstance and just help release things that might be holding you back. Mm -hmm. And how do you become a practitioner? Can anyone just become one? 
Yes, you, you can go to discoverhealing.com and that's Dr. Bradley's website. Uh, you can even, I believe you can read the first chapter of his book for free. Oh, okay. there. Just feel for it. And um, then you can pay to get certified and study. There's lots of modules and training. Um, sometimes people feel that muscle testing is quite hard. Um, it just takes practice. Mm -hmm. Um, and there's lots of YouTube videos to teach you all the different kinds of muscle testing. There's probably 10 ways you can do it. And everybody does it differently. My father does it differently than I do. He does a different thing with his fingers. I muscle test like this. Okay. And because it's fat and I can go really fast and it just connects with me the best. So different people test different ways. The, the thing is, is you just two muscles have to come together and test the strength of the muscle is all it is. And so you can become a, an emotion code practitioner. Then once you're certified in emotion code, you can move to the body code. And the body code is the one that it's a lot more in depth where you can release mental energies. And I'll tell you something crazy that happened with me. I had three ribs out mm -hmm. and I went to the chiropractor twice in two weeks. They could not align my ribs. And I was just having so much pain that I was waking up in the night. And so I called a practitioner and they released a lot of trapped emotions I had from my early twenties. And within 30 minutes, he was able to align my ribs energetically over the phone no because way. why those emotions were pushing them out. And then they set back into place when I finally got all of the junk out of there. Mm. And that was so profound for me. Because I was like, did he just align my body over the phone? So he's like, take about 10, 15 steps. And here I'm a practitioner. I believe in it 100%. But that was just a whole new level. Yeah. And so the body code can do things like that. And it's, it's you know, around 1,000 US, you know, the body code's a little more. So I don't know how that uh, translates into euros, but... Mm -hmm. But I know there's many practitioners from around the world. Um, and so with the, with the institute that I work for, we have a beautiful model because we have leadership practitioners, so you, or leadership coaches rather. So I know you, you are on the coaching side. And we have leadership coaches paired with practitioners mm -hmm. that are already certified. And then they will work on the client together. So as oh. a coach you may have seen like your clients just get stuck. Mm. You know, they just get stuck and, and you tell them to write their goals. You tell them to meditate and then they're just not doing it. Mm. So what we do say, I have a client that's having trouble meditating. I, I do a whole session on why they can't meditate and then they can meditate and then we move on. And so it's such a beautiful model. And then our particular program is six months and then they can graduate and work with us. And then okay. we give them clients and, and such. So that's how the Inside Out Institute works that I work for. But you can also be a practitioner on your own mm -hmm. and, you know, practice on your own by just going through Discover Healing. And <clears throat> it's, but it's hard to get in front of the right audience because you're right. It's, it's a different way of thinking. And it's, it's really hard for analytical scientific minds to wrap around mm -hmm unless they've just had a session and experience it. Yeah. And how, now that you know everything you know, and you're obviously practicing it daily, I imagine. Yes. How has that changed your own self-care routine? Are there things oh. now that you do that you never used to do? Like what habits have you created? Great question. I've created many new habits. I feel like a year ago before I have found the emotion code modality, and before I started, you know, being aware of energy, I lived in a state of chaos. I mean, it was just chaos. Everything was chaos. Mm -hmm. And because you work all day and then you come home with the kids and then nobody knows where their permission forms are. And then everybody doesn't know where their underwear are. I mean, it gets <laughs> crazy. And so it was so much chaos. And so one of the things that I've done that I've learned, and it was through my coach too, uh, is planning the day before it starts so your day is not completely 
you know, just reeling with circumstances being thrown at you. But as far as the energy healing thing goes, what you really have to do is watch your reactions. When, when I react in a certain way, then that's a really telltale sign to me that I need to release something. So if I'm reacting to being interrupted or to um, it really anything, there's something trapping my emotion. I may be even be reacting to a friend wanting to go to lunch with me and I'm blocking it. Mm. Why? Why did I just tell her that I couldn't when I could? You know, any reaction, um, just being very aware of how I feel and how I react. And as far as self-care, what's great about releasing all these self, you know, these self-limiting beliefs and such is a lot of the reasons we don't self-care or we don't work out and better ourselves is because of fear. Mm -hmm. So one of the things I've had to overcome and I'll be transparent because it may help your listeners is just the fear of losing weight. Mm. Why? That makes no sense. Everybody wants to lose weight. Right? Well, but what I believe it is, is there was something that happened when I was really small. And in my subconscious, I'm trying to self-sabotage from getting to be my goal weight because of what happened when I was little. Mm. So do you understand? So it's like, there's, there's so many things. If you have something you're having trouble being consistent with, it's a body code session, anything. We can dig down into anything. Um, sometimes it is a spiritual battle. And within the body code, you know, there sometimes can be some deep spiritual things that we have to release. So mm. just being a good symptoms, symptom seeker, like when you have a symptom of any kind, whether it's a feeling or a pain and just thinking, why did my shoulder just start hurting? My shoulder just started hurting. What was I thinking about? And we don't think like that, right? We take a we just pop an ibuprofen or something. And, but really what we need to think about is my shoulder did not hurt yesterday. I did not fall. I did not bump it. What am I thinking about when I start having pain? And, and what I believe happens is we have trapped emotions and things that need to be released in those areas. But some of them, I feel like I would never even think of it if I hadn't have spoken to you, like one of the things you told me is that I had a trauma that has come down, has been passed on through my father. Yes. And funnily enough, I have seen also an angel therapist after my session with you. Okay. And she said, I have issues with my father. <laughs> wow. And I was like, okay, so he's coming up a lot lately. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? But that's something that I would never consider I would never even think of it so unless someone is guided towards a therapist like you you could just walk around with these traumas and never really know or deal with them that's the tragedy mm. that's the tragedy and that's why I want to do shows like this and get the word out because think of think of the things that could be prevented you know, of course, I don't want to make any claims, but we can all think of things that could be, you know, stopped acts of violence, you know, towards self-harm. Yeah. All of those things, are they caused by deep? What if it wasn't even theirs? What if they inherited it from their great, great, great grandfather? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's bizarre and it's hard to imagine, but it's important I believe to t share this with people. And that's another reason, Martha, why I give one session free, mm -hmm. because if I never see that client again, I know that I help them with their life and I can, I'm fine with that. <laughs> you know, I'm, it's fantastic. And some people may only need one session. Mm -hmm. I mean, they can learn how to do it themselves. You know? I mean, there must be times as well. Oh, well, I don't know. You tell me is when you've spoken to someone and, have you said things that were just wrong or they were just like, no, I don't know what you're talking about. No, I, I don't. None of this relates to me. 
it has happened occasionally, mm-hmm. not many times, but occasionally. And, and what can happen, a few things can happen in this instance. The, thera- the, uh, the practitioner, like myself, could not, if I'm not completely centered and ready for your session, my own things can start creeping up. Mm. So if I, for example, I had to watch this when I was going through that, trying to quit my job, Mm. but I'm a very intuitive and intentional practitioner. So I'm very aware of when my own brain starts to creep in and give me answers because I'm, I'm just pushed my subconscious to the back to work on you. So what kept popping up was, every session I did, there was indecisiveness. Every session. And I, and so when every time I would see it, I would think, I don't think that's there. So I just wouldn't speak it out loud. And and that's why it's good to work with someone that that's, um, you know, certified and knows what they're doing. And so what I realized is this indecisiveness that kept popping up was my own. That was the biggest thing I was dealing with. Mm. Ironically, all the clients that the indecisiveness popped up in, with as well also had indecisiveness. Mm. But it was like we both felt that energy, so it was going to come out. Um, but just being good at taking data and understanding patterns is important for the practitioner. Um, as far as being wrong, no. What, what has happened before is this may have happened like with you. I have told you like, oh, you experience this at this age. And you're like, I don't remember that. And then in a day later, you're like, yeah, that was because you have to go through the processing or you ask your dad and he's like, yeah, I remember that happened to me. And you're like, oh, yeah, I didn't realize that affected me, but I guess it did. Mm-hmm. And so sometimes it comes out in the processing. If I have a client say, I don't know what that is. I'm like, okay, you don't need to know. We're just going to release it. Your mm-hmm. mind knows. Um, I have clients that have been through very, very, very traumatic things and they suppress a lot of memories, Mm -hmm. you know? And so they may not remember what happened at that particular age, uh, but through their processing, they may remember, or they just may never remember. Um, I think this is the way I feel. Even if a practitioner is not solid and completely right, they they got most of it right. Mm-hmm. They released one trapped emotion. If I can release sadness, mm-hmm. one emotion, and most sessions are anywhere from 10 to 12, 10 to 15 things. If I can release one thing, if I get one thing right, I've changed their life. Mm-hmm. So even as you practice and become a practitioner to let go of that fear and that insecurity that you're wrong, if you get one thing right, you help them. And so I don't get many wrongs, but, um, you know, when you're learning, you might, you know? Yeah. Oh, I feel like there's so much information to take in. <laughs> <laughs> it's like information overload. For sure. Yeah. So, um, when you say that your clients meditate, what else do you tell them to do as like a regular thing apart from meditation? Great question. I, I like, I think it's important that we exercise every day, Mm -hmm. even if it's just a walk, you know, it doesn't have to be intense. Uh, With the Institute, we teach our our clients KPIs and what they are is key performance indicators. So when you do these things every day, your performance will be higher. It's Mm -hmm. just proven. It's what most of the successful people in the world do. And it's read every day. Okay. Uh, Read about 10 to 15 pages every day. Because you want to broaden your ideas. You want to broaden. You want to grow. You don't want to just stay in the same place you were 10 years ago. Hmm. So reading, uh, you can read anything you want, but I like to read self-help or you can read your book of faith, whatever it is. Um, then uh, meditate. I, I like to say twice a day, right when okay. you wake up before you're fully conscious. Um, and I like sound bowl meditations you okay. want to be careful because sometimes the frequencies in some sound bowl meditations actually pull you down. Oh. Um, so it's important to do ones that are very trusted. I could recommend some um, 
that are good practitioners that do sound bowl therapy. And so lots of things uh, could help with meditation, different types of meditation. But another thing that I think is really important is journaling. When you journal and you write, even though we're in a, a technical world and we text everything and we, we type everything, writing creates clarity of thought. And sometimes when you're writing, it's like a thought can come out because of almost the time it takes to write. I think we're designed exactly the way we're supposed to be. So when it takes you 20 seconds to write a sentence, I can type a sentence in five seconds. Mm -hmm. But I, it takes me all, I can only write so fast. And I think it's because the brain needs to articulate something onto paper. And so I believe writing is very powerful. And I don't believe you should write for very long. <laughs> I think if you're writing for, you know, three pages, you're going to have some negativity and some funkiness start coming out. <laughs> so <it> just, <laughs> you're going to be like, and by the way, that wasn't fair. <laughs> so just stick it to a couple sentences and yeah. you know this is how I felt today but I'm grateful for this and, and and then that brings me to the biggest one of all and that's gratitude mm -hmm. when you live in love and gratitude different emotions have different frequencies the lowest emotional frequency is like sorrow and despair mm -hmm. But the lowest of lowest of low is shame. So mm. when people feel shame, it's like their will to live is, is struggling. So see shame, if there was a chart of emotions, which, which there are these types of charts, shame is like right here as far as vibrational energy. And then love and gratitude are at the top. And then there's little things like joy and, you know, things in the middle. But, but if you are always trying to love people and, and we, I'm big on having our clients send gratitude texts to three people a day. Okay. And so what does that do? It raises your vibration. If I were to hang up and say, which we will do this, I'm sure, but I hang up and I say, thank you so much, Martha, for that time. Then I may have you know, had a stress that came at me in, in the form of a text before we got on this call, but I just shifted my entire vibration and energy by shifting to gratitude. So trying to really focus on the, the emotions we don't want to trap, right? <laughs> the emotions that, that don't get trapped that we just want to encompass, and that's gratitude and love and appreciation and things like that. So that helps a lot as well. And some people like to journal their gratitude. I feel like it's important to actually text people one-on-one. -on -one. And, and then some people have trouble doing that. Mm. If you have trouble with gratitude, we probably need to do a heart wall session. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's so much, it's so much to cover in a, in a short hour because it's yeah, so yeah. deep and so much, but we I think that those are some great tools and, and then just random acts of kindness. You know, we hear that all the time, mm -hmm. but it's powerful. I mean, we've all done it and we felt incredible after it. Yeah. And so I think we live in a society that wants to just make money and make money and take, 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 but we forget that we have to give. And when we give, it shifts us into a healthier emotional state. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. Okay, well, I've taken up enough of your time, I think. <laughs> Fine. We could probably talk for hours. Yeah, All I love this topic. Our listeners will be like, really, people? I've got things to do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, I'm going to finish on like how people can connect with you. But I would say for anyone, even if you don't have like a physical pain or issue, maybe you just feel a bit lost, maybe you want some clarity on something to definitely have a consultation with you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, but yeah, let us let my listeners know how they can connect with you, what you have going on. Sure. Well, first of all, it makes me so happy that you haven't had symptoms in three months. That's 
Incredible. I'm so excited about that. Mm -hmm. but, but second of all, how people connect with, with me, um, they can find me on Instagram. My name there, uh, Tanisha Graham dot official. And I have a podcast also called cue the creative and the link is in the bio where I interview people that are just amazing in all different walks of life and, and cue people's creativity. But if people would like a consultation, they can DM me or um, they can find me on WhatsApp. Um, if anybody contacts you, you're welcome to share my number with them mm -hmm. and contact me there and we can set up a consultation. I always do the first 30 minute healing free. Uh, and I can do that as long as, as I can. I still have a few more days open. I'm getting booked, but as long as I have time, I'd like to keep doing that. And then after that, you know, if they want to do sessions, we can, we can figure out how to get them more sessions. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Thank you so much for coming on to the podcast. I've really enjoyed it. <laughs> I have too. I have too. Thank you so much for having me, Martha. And uh, yeah, it made me feel so wonderful that you're feeling good as well. Yeah, thank you. And I'm so happy that you were introduced to me, actually. Yes, it was oh, yeah. a blessing. Thank you so much. I <laughs> thank loved our you. time together today. <laughs> me too. Okay. And um, yeah, I will speak to you. Oh, cheers before we go. I was about to say cheers. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, I look forward to seeing what else you have coming up soon as well. Thank you so much. All, All right. right. Well, have thank a wonderful you, day. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.